This is the OpenRC F1 3D printable RC car. It's designed by Daniel Larey out of Sweden, and it's meant to be nearly fully 3D printed. You have to attach some screws, and I believe there's some bearings in there. Then you add a speed controller and a motor and a radio, and then zoom, 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 it's, it's remote control. Some people have printed this slightly bigger, 200% scale, 250% scale. What if I wanted it 400% scale? That's what I did. 47 pounds of filament later and more than 1100 hours of 3D printing and phase one, the print is done. Let's talk about the pieces and what it took to bring these up to 4X their normal size. I'm Joel and this is 3D Printing Nerd. Time lapse from Sean. He's doing the good work of the editing to the 3D Printing Nerd channel. This all started because I wanted to print one of the rims larger. I took one of the rims and I printed it at 4X scale on the Rays 3D and 2 Plus. I printed it in Matterhacker's Build PLA. I did four perimeters cubic infill at, I believe it was 10%, maybe 20%, but the print turned out great. It was so good and it felt strong. All those perimeters really made it feel like it was sturdy and robust and something that could withstand uh, the weight of the rest of the car and a tire on it. With the rim being a successful print, it only made sense for me to continue with this 4X scale build. So it left me thinking, when going to 4X scale, you're going to end up with parts that are just larger than any of your 3D printers are able to produce. And I have, I have a G-Max, I have an N2+, Plus. I have some large prints. Some of the pieces were gonna be bigger than what those machines could produce. So we had to come up with a way to intelligently and digitally slice the pieces before sending them to the printers. For this, I used an application called Mesh Mixer. It's put out by Autodesk and it's completely free and it works great. Essentially, you do a plain cut in certain areas, you separate the surfaces and then you export STL files. I did release a video on that uh, titled How Mesh Mixer Isn't Scary, which I always thought it was. And uh, it, it worked great. It worked fantastic. I was able to take the pieces that weren't gonna fit on the larger printers and split them up intelligently into pieces that would print on, well, on the big printers, the small printers, all the printers. I wanna make sure I reiterate the fact though that not all of the pieces had to be split up in order to print on even some of the larger printers. I mean, this gear did not, and this back piece did not. This is gonna get crowded quick. This little gear, uh, this part of the, the axle, I believe, even the nose of the car. Look at that, that's the nose of the car. Even the nose was able to be 3D printed all in one piece. Sometimes it even, uh, it ended up where I, I cut up a piece originally and then for one reason or another, I actually attempted to print it in one piece. And one of the examples is this, uh, the front bomb or the BOM or the something. It uh, goes like this and it goes like this. This part is meant to hold the, the, the wheels at the front, but because the slices were made at the arms where there needs to be some some weight bearing, uh, I thought maybe that wasn't best. And so I ended up, well, I ended up printing them all in one piece. Thankfully, the G-Max was able to do this if I turned them diagonally. Like I've said before, the rims all printed in one piece. Uh, here they are in the tires. <laughs> they look great. One thing to note about the tires, they all printed in one piece as well, but each one is more than one kilogram of Matter Hacker's Pro Flex filament. And each tire on the Lulzbot with the Morse Truder took 24 hours to print. And because it took more than one spool each tire, you had to kind of watch it and make sure that you didn't run out of filament when printing. Oh, and before you forget, and before I forget, don't forget to dry out your flexible material. So uh, flexibles are hygroscopic and they will absorb moisture from the air, more so than a PLA, more so than an ABS material. And when moisture is in a material, especially in a flexible material, as it's leaving the hot nozzle, 
the moisture is is boiled and evaporated at that point and it makes it go pop 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 and it bubbles as it's coming out so thankfully i uh i have a food dehydrator if you here look at this one you can kind of see how it's uh, a little bit icky a little bit icky right along there but uh, like i said thankfully i have a food dehydrator so i was able to put the, uh, the flexible material in there let it dry overnight then i put it on the more struder and oh it was it was amazing an overnight drying session did for that filament it was incredible in fact it was so amazing i had to pull out my camera phone and i uh i recorded a little something and those layers are like butter they're like butter oh man oh man well if you're ever going to put flexible material make sure you dry it out first because then it is epic well while the rims and the tires and some other pieces could be printed without splitting them up there are many other pieces that needed to be printed and split up. So let's take a look at some of those. We'll take, for example, this. This is called the center body. Let me turn it so you can see it. It looks kind of like that. Kind of like that. And as one piece, it's larger than any of my machines can print. So using Mesh Mixer, I was able to cut off this support piece and I could print it right there. So the little connector between these two lobes would then print separately and I could print each of these separately. But because of the angle at which they normally printed, uh, they weren't fitting within the build area. So I did have to rotate and I did have to print up like this. I did encounter an issue where I didn't realize this needed support, but the Raze 3D is a champion and it was able to recover from this just fine. Little, little PLA hairs right there. And when I printed this one, I remembered support and it turned out awesome. It's so large. The front spoiler itself was huge. And originally I split it up into four different pieces so that they could be printed on the Sigma and the Raze 3D N2 Plus. And it would go something like this, and then like that. So, so things in the way. Oh, there we go. Something like that. But the, the points of contact right here and right here are just too thin, and I think where it sits on the car at the front, those would have a, a, a really high probability of breaking away no matter how much glue or epoxy I used. So I went back and I recut it like this so that I could print it in two pieces on the G-Max printer. And this came out great uh, because it's one continuous filament strand. There is some strength in these two parts that I was worried about over here. The issue though, being split right down the middle is where it's attached to the car, there's a, there's a split right down the hole. To fix this, my idea is to epoxy or glue these together so it's a really good, was that a butt joint, right? So a really good glued joint. And then skin this side and skin this side with some plastic, like the type of plastic they use in garage sale and yard sale signs. I forget what kind of plastic it's called. but. That skin should then give it some resilience and, and help the glue hold, and hopefully it means we would have an amazing front spoiler. I don't know where this all goes. Scoot over. Okay. All right, the center lid, it's huge, and it had to be split up into, into four parts because, well, it was just, it was big, and it was angled, and it had to print on the G-Max, like this, and then... Look at this, this is huge, this is... This is crazy, this is crazy huge. Thankfully, the slices themselves are good, and gluing it shouldn't be a problem. What have I done? The rear axle is super wide and it wasn't going to fit on any of the build platforms that I had. So what I did is I, I sliced it right here, this, this main center shaft. I sliced it up twice 
So then there are these uh, three pieces. Originally, I put all three on the Sigma, but printing all at the same time, I got a crazy layer shift. I was like, ah, dang it. So then I just did one at a time and they, they worked out great. Uh, you may be worried, being that it's an axle, having to glue things mid-axle, maybe that's not the best idea. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think if we glue it well, and then do that plastic skin like I was talking about before, they'll come together real good. However, if it's not good and it doesn't work, I have some options. I could have this printed on the super wide G Max at G Create headquarters, or maybe I make this out of some wooden dowel. I mean, the possibilities are endless. The rear chassis was cut up into 15 different parts. And the reason I did this was so it would fit on the Ultimaker 3 build platform. And the Ultimaker 3 did a fantastic job with this build. I was super impressed with how well it was able to print this many pieces. I think that just like the axle, we're, we're dealing with some, some load bearing issues because it's a, should be one solid piece and it's been cut up into smaller pieces. And the idea is the same. I want to use some of the plastic that I talked about wrapping the axle with and skinning this to, to provide some sort of sheer strength. Ha, there we go. Uh, so it's larger than the entire car. Oh my goodness. One of the cool things I learned while doing this is uh, printing it on the Ultimaker 3 meant that I had to do some spool changes. And at one point, the spool is going to run out. So I just let it go and then I start, I held another piece of filament in and just kind of followed it into the extruder and it worked. It worked great. Obviously uh, retractions aren't going to work because the, the extruder is playing with a filament bit that isn't attached to the, the most of the stuff in the Bowden tube, but we're dealing with these large flat pieces, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of retraction. So whatever. Also that Ultimaker 3 printed the Matter Hackers Build PLA to perfection. Oh, it was so good. Those first layers were amazing. Oh, just amazing. Buttery smooth. Couldn't see lines. The, the pictures don't even do it justice. It's like, it's like in Rick and Morty when Rick showed Morty true level. Oh. Morty, come on, we're leaving for school. Oh. Oh, everything's crooked. Reality is poison. I, I want to go back. I hate this. What's his deal? Morty, Morty, Morty. Go to school, Summer. I'll go in Morty's memory and do a little. <laughs> Lambs to the cosmic slaughter! So good. Well, enough of me putting together and showing you all these parts. Let's mock it up. I've got some gaff, gaff tape, and I think what we can do is kind of mock up how this is gonna look. Let's do it. Hey, Sean, roll a time lapse. Hey, don't worry, while you're watching me quickly build this open RC, just remember, Matter Hacker's build PLA is fantastic. In fact, the entire build line of Matter Hacker's materials is wonderful, and I've printed with a lot of it. It's great when you want to create something large because the material is inexpensive for what it is and it produces great results. So, uh, wow, look at all those printers that are gonna be running build. So, get yourself some Matter Hacker's build PLA especially. I love it, the ABS works, but get yourself some build PLA. It's fantastic. All right, there we go. This is it. This is, this is most of it. This is a lot of it. I mean, it's missing some of the internal parts. It's missing the, the front arms and the things that attach to the wheels and it's missing the big wing in the back. Don't worry, gotta save some things for the assembled reveal. But essentially, this is what we're looking at. I'm looking at it in the playback monitor and it's freaking fantastic. Well, you may ask yourself, what's next? Getting this all printed was phase one. Phase two is working with Bill Duran of Punished Props to 
glue all of the pieces that I had to tape together. He knows a lot more about glues and adhesives than I do, and he'll know if epoxies are right, or super glues, or JB welds, or friction welds, or something. Plus, he knows where to get all the plastic we need to skin things, if that's what we're gonna do. Phase three will be assembly. Sorry, tire. That's when I'll put everything together. We'll have all of the pieces printed, and all of the pieces that need to be glued or adhered together will be glued or adhered together. And finally, I'll be able to find some bolts and some nuts and some things to, to go together. I mean, they it sta takes standard M nuts and M screws, I think, but I think when you go 4X scale, uh, you gotta get bigger nuts. Okay, for, for phase one, let's, let's do something that we used to do in the software field all the time, and that's do a lessons learned. So after a certain phase of a project, we sit back and we evaluate how well it went, what went well, what went wrong, what can we can improve for the next phase. First, the Matter Hackers Build PLA printed fantastic. It's crazy how well this stuff printed on one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, six different machines? Six different machines. And it printed great on all of them. Some machines were at 205C, the Ultimaker 3 printed it really well at 230C. I know Matter Hackers is a sponsor of the channel and I know they're sponsoring the filament of this, but I'm telling you right now, it printed gorgeously and I printed 40 pounds of it. I'm not saying that as a marketing term, I'm just telling you it printed really, really well. The Raze 3D N2 Plus and the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus are workhorses to say the least. They were the main printers printing these large pieces that had to be split up into slightly smaller pieces. I know the Ultimaker did the, the bottom pieces and, and a bunch of small parts, but I mean, for the GMAX to be able to go through and do this top piece and for the N2 Plus to be able to do this lobe and this, this front piece and then the, the N2 Plus did uh, the motor cover, they did a fantastic job in this project. I'm very, very happy with their performance. Uh, Magigoo, which powered the build plate adhesion for all of this, works great. Through printing 80 some odd parts for this, it's amazing how well it holds the piece and then once it cools, the piece essentially just lifts right off without any scraper needed. I know PEI holds well, but you do have to sometimes, you know, once it cools down, you do have to free the part. I know that glue stick works well, but then it leaves this residue. I know that build tack was working for the most part, but uh, I put I put Magigoo on the build tack on the GMAX, and it really helped hold things down. Magigoo powered everything on the N2 Plus on the glass, and I was just able to lift things off the build plate once it cooled down. One of the things about Magigoo that I, I did learn from experience is if you try to free the piece before the build plate cools down, you will lift Magigoo off of the build plate. So you do have to have some patience and you do have to wait a little bit, but once you do, it just floats off the build plate. It's fantastic. Finally, I think when splitting the models in Mesh Mixer, on next project, I will learn how to add registration marks. These should be pretty easy to glue together. They're large enough and they have a big enough uh, surface area on the outside of the model parts to be able to clamp or hold or tape or whatever. But I think it would have been better had I modeled in registration marks or some sort of holes on either side that I could add a dowel or a peg or something. I don't know how to do that in Mesh Mixer and I used Mesh Mixer to split everything, so I think that would be a good thing to learn. All right, phase one, done. Everything's printed. A big thanks to Magigoo for providing some really good bed adhesion. I ran out, I have got some more on order. A big thanks to Matter Hackers for sponsoring the filament of this project. Big thanks to all these awesome machines that I have that just killed it, oh, so good. Let's call it good. And if you wanna support what we do and, and let us continue to keep doing stuff like this, there's a Patreon link down below. Consider joining. Everybody in the High Five Club gets access to an After the Five show directly after each video. It's fun, a lot of people like that. Uh, besides that, if you're not in a Patreon, lots of other ways to support the channel. There are links down in the description. Feel free to tickle any of those and uh, that'd be great. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys, as always. High Five.